Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another edition of Arkansans Ask. Governor Mike Beebe, who for the next 60 minutes, Governor, thanks very much for being with us again. For the next 60 minutes, we'll be taking as many questions as possible, although not in this edition from viewers at home or even from me. No, we are coming to you for, uh, for this edition of Arkansans Ask, not in the AET in studios. We're still in Conway, but we're down the road at Hendricks College in Staples Auditorium, Hendricks College, uh, once again for the 28th consecutive year, hosting the Arkansas Governor's School, a multi-week gathering of Arkansas's best and brightest who are about to begin their senior year in high school and uh, are already reaching for the stars. And a uh, very sincere thanks to uh, Hendricks College and the Governor's School for allowing us, Governor, to come in. And it's your school, I guess. Well, they give it that name, but the truth of the matter is uh, this has been going on for so long uh, in an attempt to try to gather the brightest young people uh, about to enter their senior year, expose them to uh, a number of different ideas and uh, exchange of, uh, of uh, geography from uh, different parts of the state and certainly to uh, enhance their academic skills through a series of intense programs throughout the summer. I understand this is the, the last week. Uh, I was here when uh, Governor's School started uh, several weeks back and uh, they were all uh, eager uh, at that time to get started. I'm sure they're just as eager now uh, to go on home. If I, uh, I did not take AP math. Uh, but, neither did I. But, but uh, my understanding is that this multi-week rich curriculum is made available to approximately 400 students for in the very, very, very low six figures, about a little bit more than 100K, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's a really cost-effective program. It's, is it? That's that was my question. Yes, Does this pay off? Do you look at the taxpayer and say this is a great investment? Absolutely. I mean, these these are the folks that are going to be leading our state. They're going to be leading in various areas, whether it's in business or in education, whether it's in health care or politics. Uh, these folks will be taking care of you and I one of these days in terms of running the state while we're while we're hopefully uh, relaxing and turning that uh, t job over to someone else. And so uh, the exposure. Uh, that they receive during this uh, time frame is something that hopefully will stand them in good stead going forward and cause challenge them in areas and perhaps in areas that they didn't even know they were interested in. A lot of times we hear stories back uh, that uh, young people thought they knew what they wanted to do, but after uh, governor's school uh, developed an interest in a totally different area that caused them to go in a different direction. We need our best and brightest young people to be able to stay in our state, and that's part of what we're trying to do in this administration. A few, few questions off the top before we go to questions out here from the students. Uh, the number one dilemma one suspects facing the country is Iraq. You have received a communication of late from the Department of Defense. And yeah, not a happy one. No, it's not a happy one. Uh, and we're not at liberty to talk about any specifics because <coughs> until all the family members have been notified, although I think they've all been notified uh, at this point, we, we're still uh, awaiting confirmation. Uh, it's never a pleasant task. In fact, Steve, the hardest job that I've had uh, as governor is making phone calls to uh, the widows or the mothers, uh, or in some cases the fathers of uh, Arkansas soldiers that were uh, killed in Iraq. So those are uh, those are tough, tough uh, times, and our soldiers are uh, uh, are in harm's way over there. Have you had any communications at all from, uh, let's say, with the congressional delegation or the DOD or, for that matter, from the executive branch in Washington regarding wh what's next? I mean, particularly vis-a-vis -vis our Guard and Reserve personnel. Who are well, uh, it's no secret that uh, our 39th has been uh, given initial orders. Uh, they don't have the actual go orders yet, but they've been in, given initial orders that indicate that they will be redeployed uh, in uh, combat zones. And they've already been there, and uh, the Department of Defense and, uh, and the Pentagon and the federal government has apparently changed the rules in that regard. Uh, initially, uh, they were not going to redeploy uh, guards people uh, within a five-year uh, span, but they've uh, obviously changed that. So we do have uh, a number of soldiers already over there. We've got a number of units that are currently serving there. And then we have, uh, I guess, our largest unit, the 39th Brigade, that's been tasked uh, with the assignment of uh, probably uh, going back over there within the next year. And, and for how long? Do you need to well, the normal deployment uh, in theater is about a year. And usually with uh, training time and uh, gear up time, uh, sometimes it's been as long as 18 months away from their families on active duty. But the actual time in theater, the actual time in the war zone is usually about one year. 
Well, as far as the Guard goes, uh, have you received any feedback from the Adjutant General or any of the staff regarding recruiting and retention, how this is yeah, affecting that, recruiting and, and retention? I, I, I've, been I've been surprised, and I have to say pleasantly surprised, that uh, recruiting and retention has not, uh, has not faltered. Uh, recruiting and retention are still up in the areas that they uh, were before all the deployments. Now, you know, you, you wonder if it ever gets to a point where, where that will change. It has not yet changed. Uh, and I have to tell you that uh, regardless of how everyone feels about uh, what's going on over there and what the strategy is or, or in some cases is not, uh, the morale of our troops has been uh, unbelievably high. And uh, they're well trained and they are, they are willing to do the job that's assigned to them and they're doing it uh, in good spirits. Uh, our concern uh, and my concern has to be that uh, they're properly trained and properly equipped and that their families are taken care of. Uh, I told a group of them uh, that, that I attended a training session on uh, that uh, it's not part of the 39th, but that they're already in training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, uh, for deployment, that uh, they needn't worry about their families. Let us worry about the families. Let us, back in Arkansas, take care of the families. If, if they'll concentrate on taking care of themselves and one another and, and doing their mission, then uh, they don't need to worry about, have another worry about how their family's doing back home. We need to take care of those families. The overseas deployments, Governor, have they, to what extent, if any, have they restricted your flexibility in terms of a disaster response? Well, so Either. far they have not. Uh, so far they've not restricted our ability. Uh, the federal government claims they'll never reduce our National Guard strength at home below 50 percent, and we have about 11,000 guardsmen. So. Uh, for virtually any foreseen uh, disaster, uh, we're probably okay. Now, if you had a new Madrid event, it might be a totally different situation. <clears throat> but uh, so far, we've not been restricted. And frankly, our equipment, for the most part, is still okay, except for Black Hawk helicopters. Now, they've, they've taken all the Black Hawk helicopters uh, that we had. But for the most part, uh, we're still able to meet uh, uh, anything foreseeable. And we have been able to meet uh, those things that have occurred, such as the tornadoes and dunes.